In this video, we will implement short polling in React using Axios. The source code we write and the website resources will be available in the video description below. So short polling is a technique in which uh, the server performs an asynchronous operation that can take a long time. And um, uh, while waiting for this um, operation to complete, the client, in our case React, will send the polling operations to see if the process has completed. This is the API that uh, we are going to use in this tutorial. It's an API for companies. So here we can see a company with ID one. It has a company name and uh, this is the flag that we will use to determine if the operation has completed or not. So if we should stop polling. In, uh, in this case, we can see that company one creation is still in progress. And we also have a different company with ID two. Here we can see that uh, the process, the creation process for the company has finished. We see ready equals true. And it also has a new field uh, TIN, which is the tax ident identification number in um, USA. So when uh, the polling has uh, finished, we will uh, display this uh, TIN field. Uh, the way in which I created the server is using this uh, node package called uh, node static. And uh, what it does, it just it re it creates an HTTP server locally that uh, returns the files in a directory. So you can just uh, you do npm install uh, globally node static and then when you run static, it serves the files from the current directory on port 8080. And uh, this is what I did here as well. I do static and I add this uh, two headers for um, cores policy. So access control allow orange and uh, star and access control allow headers star. So here in this directory, if we take a look, we have um, this is the directory in which the server is running. So we have a, a subdirectory companies with the two files, one that JSON and two that JSON. So if we take a look in these two files, we, we can see exactly what the server is returning. And um, here we can modify these responses. So if we add a new field, let's say ABC, and we save this file. So if we reload this page, we will see the field we just added. Now we can create the React project using Vite. So in here, if we do npm create Vite at latest, uh, let's call this one React polling, and uh, we'll uh, use React from here and uh, JavaScript. So yeah, now I'm going to open the project up screen. This is our project in my editor, which is uh, IntelliJ IDEA. So we need to do npm uh, according to the what uh, Vite printed out. We need to do npm install and npm run dev. So here in the terminal, we will do npm install and uh, npm run uh, dev. So it opened uh, our server on port uh, 5174 and we see the boilerplate uh, Vite project in here, which we are going to clean up right now. So here in source in uh, app.jsx, we're just going to return a paragraph with hello world. Let's see. Hello world, and we'll uh, remove the all these images and uh, CSS files. And we also need to remove the CSS from main.jsx. Make sure you save it. So now we see just uh, a basic project. Okay, we can now start to implement the actual polling. So normally in uh, JavaScript, there is this uh, native function that called the set interval that uh, 
can execute a function periodically. So in here we do set interval our function and uh, delay the number of milliseconds. I think the del yeah delay is in milliseconds and now we can see it here in action I think at the bottom of this page. So if we do start we can see that it circles through changing the color of the text until we stop it. However, the set interval doesn't um, uh, play very well with the React because we would need to do a set interval inside the use effect and then the cleanup uh, gets tricky. So there is actually a React developer called Dan Abramov that um, went into depth into what what are the problems with set interval and React. It's a very interesting read. I recommend you go through this uh, post. But he, what he actually did is he he wrote a React hook called the use interval that we can use instead that works the same way. It takes a function and a delay and uh, then it works uh, just like set interval, but it works with React. And also the nice part about this uh, React hook is that uh, delay can be a dynamic variable. So it can be a state object or it can be an expression. While with set interval, once we, once we set one interval, let's say we set it for 500 milliseconds, then our code will run every 500 milliseconds, but if we want to change it to one second, then we need to clear out the interval and then create it again. But this one will work with delay being changed. So we will use this uh, this mechanic to actually stop our polling when our object is ready. So we will just use this uh, use interval uh, hook in our project. So here in app.jsx, uh, actually we can move it to a use interval uh, class. It's a better uh, structure. So in here we do use interval JSX. Okay, we have to make sure we import all these uh, all the other hooks he's using, use ref and use effect. Okay, it looks good. So now we can um, actually increment this counter, let's say every second or so. So to try out this uh, hook, so we will do use interval. Yeah, we need to, we need to export. So we'll do export default use interval. So now in here we will do use interval um, every a thousand milliseconds. So in here we will do set count to the old value plus one. We will use this uh, lambda format for set count. So now we can just uh, display the count value in here. So we will do the count is count. We need to import the use interval. Okay. So now if we try, if we go back to our project, we will see that it increases every second. And also we can try now to to see that the delay is actually, it can be dynamic. So instead of hard coding a thousand milliseconds, we will use another state variable for a delay. So we will do set delay. We, in, we initialize it to a thousand milliseconds, so one second. Delay and we're also going to add a button here that will uh, stop the in increment incrementation of the count. So we'll call this button stop. So we'll do on click. Uh, if we set the delay to null, 
this will stop the process so we can um, try it out we see the count is incrementing and now if we do stop yeah we see it stopped which it means it worked uh, as we expected next we can add the code that pulls the api instead of uh, incrementing the counter so first we need to add uh, another dependency to our project in uh, axios so we will do npm i for install axios so now instead in uh, inside use interval we don't need the set count anymore for incrementing so instead we will do uh, the request inside a try catch make sure we log the error if our request fails so in here we will do response equal await yeah so now um, our um, lambda in here is an async uh, function so we will do axios dot get so the api will be 127.0.0.1 port 8080 companies and uh, one that JSON and we also need to disable the cache uh, disable axios to use the browser cache so in here we will do headers cache control no cache uh, pragma also no cache and expires zero otherwise we we might get uh, stale values from um, the api so even if the api returns that the response is ready axios will get the cache value which says it's not ready we want to prevent that here we want to import the axios so here at the top and um, for now let's just uh, print it to the console the response we're also going to print the date and then response that data and we can increase the delay a little bit let's say every five seconds or so so now in here if we open um, developer tools we can take a look at the console so we will see here the, um, that they do requests do get sent every five seconds or so. So it's 21, 26, 31, which is good. And this is the response we get. So we get uh, company one, name, ready, false, field ABC, which is this um, object in here. So what is left to do is to stop polling um, when the object is ready and display this um, tin field so now instead of the count we will uh, we will use a message uh, state field let's call this one message set message initially we'll put the message let's say waiting on the server like that so now we no longer need to display the account instead we'll do the message we can also remove the button so if we go back it says waiting on the server and um, also in here we will uh, check if the object is ready so it says if response dot data i think the flag was ready yeah that ready we will set uh, set the message to tin tin and then the value of uh, response data dot tin and also we need to stop polling so we will do set delay equals null 
and um, yeah this should be it so if we go in here of course the when using uh, ID 1 it will keep polling until we make it ready but if we switch this to 2 this should uh, stop polling right away yeah we can see it displays the ID as expected but now uh, let's do let's switch it back to 1 so we should see that it says waiting on the server actually we need to refresh refresh anything yeah it says waiting on the server and uh, now uh, if we change the response in the API so we will do this one true and then uh, let's do tin we'll do 999 111 222 so if we save it we see it got the new the correct field and also it should stop making requests we'll just wait a few seconds to make sure and uh, yeah it looks like it worked as expected this uh, is all the material I had for this video if you want to support the channel please uh, like the video or consider subscribing there are a lot of videos on react how to make deployments in the cloud and other topics thank you for watching